Now, I've been asked quite a few times, why won't you be a Christian? Why won't you go with it? You've, you, know, you know the stuff behind the faith. You've read the Bible, all of this and that. Why, why won't you be a Christian? And the number one answer I can give is hell and the fact that it exists. Now, if we look at the Old Testament of the Bible, we really get little about what it is beyond darkness and gnashing of teeth and that sort of thing. Hell as it is now, and as it is taught, is a flaming pit of torture for eternity where demons throw pitchforks made of fire into your head repeatedly or some such nonsense. And it turns into an entire picture of this carnival of terror for eternity. And this is where you go if you don't believe and if you're a bad person. And mostly the thing that bothers me is that it's about faith. You must have faith in God or you go to hell. That's the number one thing, isn't it? Only through me shall you reach the Father, said Jesus. He is the path, and if you do not have faith in him, you go to hell. And therein is why I cannot be specifically a Christian. Because your faith is stipulated on soul extortion. It'd be a terrible shame if something happened to your soul. You'd better believe in me, or accidents could happen. I mean, it's, it's almost mafioso in its extent, where you have to pay your protection prayers, or God's going to make the worst bad thing ever happen to you. It's not virtuous to believe in him if there's a gun to your head. It's not a choice of faith, then, if you actually believe that, well, if I don't believe this, I'll burn for eternity. It's extortion. It's a threat. It, it's what the mafia does. It's what a child throwing a tantrum does. Give me this or I'll continue to scream. When you have the ultimatum of worship me or burn in hell, it turns worshiping him from a virtuous choice into something you do out of fear. And anyone who tells me to do something out of ultimate fear, and it's not something that isn't hurting someone else, like if someone tells me, don't murder somebody or the state will get you, well, that, that's a reasonable thing, you know? Murdering people directly hurts others. No one has yet made a case to me how not believing in God has hurt anyone. Yet, the ultimate of punishments, greater than any other that could possibly be inflicted, the eternity of soul torture, waits on that insignificant crime. And yeah, it is insignificant. Because out of all the horrifyingly bad things I could do, not believing in God is not going to kill anyone. Killing people will kill people. That's bad. Not believing in God? No one's hurt by that. Yet, that is the ultimate punishment reserved for? That is the crime in which the greatest of tortures will be inflicted? No, I can't buy it. Right there, I can't buy it. A lot of the other messages in your faith are good. Love your brother and all that stuff, but when your faith has that sword of Damocles hanging over your head, no matter what you're doing, the wrath of God sits upon you unless this one critical factor is secured. That is not a faith I will be a part of. And if you're not getting into heaven through good works, but through faith, then we're allowing some of the worst people who simply believe in God to go to heaven. That, that's how that works. You can believe in God and still be a bad person. It's not like believing in God magically gives you morals. No, that's not how it works. If the only condition for getting into the pleasure palace is being virtuous, well, then people are probably going to try to be virtuous. But if the only condition is believing in something, well, then people are going to try to believe in that and everything else is as they will come. If you wish your faith to be an example of virtuousness and honesty, and goodness, and charity, and the great virtues that make good people, then you cannot have a gun to your head saying, do them or else. You must choose to do them every own free will for them to be truly virtuous. And that is the problem I have with your faith. It is not encouraging good acts for the betterment of yourself, but it is encouraging good acts to avoid damnation. You know, all of this, take it and throw it aside, because hell is one of the most, if not the most unjust idea for a punishment system that's come about. No matter the crime committed for someone being in there, is because it is an eternity of torture. It is literally, according to the Bible, forever. I don't know if I can conceive of a crime that is actually worthy of until for, well, not until, because there is no end. Forever is a mind-blowing concept, and that is how long these people will suffer. I'll say it, not even Hitler deserves literally forever. No one does. There, I, you can't make a case to me that anyone deserves that much punishment. Non-existence, fine. Throw them in the great oblivion, and they're gone. They're gone. That's fine. You're, they're done. That's punishment. But eternal torture forever is... It's, it's the most heinous thing that I can think of. And this comes from a God that is moral and just, according to the Bible. This is the source of morality. 
this is the God of love who will throw you into the eternity of hellfire torture. That cannot be. A God of love would never do that. I would stipulate that right now. If this is a God of love, he would never throw people in a fiery pit forever. There's a chance of repentance. What if someone in hell truly repents after millennia of torture or whatever, and they see truly why they are wrong and what they did was terrible, and they understand the virtues of light finally? Well, too bad. They're just going to burn some more. Yeah, add some hellfire to that revelation. Feels good. There are those people who do believe that hell is not a literal fiery brimstone torture pit, but an, an absence of God in everything about him. And in a way, that's not as bad in a degree, but at the same time, this is still an eternity. This is still forever separated from what they claim to be everything that is good, just, right, and worthwhile in the universe after death. You are eternally separated from what they say is the reason of existence. And in a way, like I said, this could be said to be not as bad, but at the same time, it's worse. It's not a realm of sensation. It's empty, void of everything, forever. That, in a way, what you could get used to torture, I guess, and eventually you could at least have differing sensations in hell, right? But this kind of hell, this void, it's nothing for eternity. Nothing. And I could almost say that's worse. I think there's at least enough reason to question the virtue of of a system that causes eternal pain or absence of pleasure. Just something to think about.